We're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. And we're doing a lot of shows about important things these days. Uh, today, we're going to do a show about the, the history of, um, of epidemics, which is very relevant to our time with our historian, our chief historian, if you will, John Davidan of HPU. Uh, Hi, John. Yes. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Jay. Great to be back. Yes. How are you feeling, Jay? I'm feeling fine. I have no temperature. I do not have a dry cough. And my lungs are okay. just dandy fine. How about you, John? I'm feeling okay. I'm actually fighting a cold, but I'm pretty sure it's not the coronavirus. Yeah, don't breathe on the microphone if you don't mind. And after this show, we're both going to wash, wash <laughs> hey, our hands. This, we, is, this is the advantage of remote broadcast. That it right? is. We invented it just Everything in time. Everything remote. <laughs> well, anyway, let's talk. Let's talk about um, yeah. let's talk about history because you know I think we forget sometimes, and it hits us in the eye like a pizza pie, and we don't realize that. A lot of the strains and aggravations and frustrations and, and fears that we experience now with coronavirus have been present in other epidemics before. In fact, the history of humanity is rife with epidemics, <laughs> academics right. and, and, and epidemics. <laughs> all of yeah, the let's foregoing. Not confuse, let's not confuse those two. There okay. is a difference, I hope. But anyway, John, <laughs> yeah. tell, tell us about some of the early epidemics. Right, right. So, you know, so the, the current, uh, what is, it's probably, a, I, I saw a 60 Minutes show on the coronavirus last night, and and uh, the one of the experts said, yes, we are in a pandemic now. The difference between an epidemic and a pandemic is an epidemic is uh, regional or national, and a pandemic is global. So I think we are in a pandemic situation. Um, you know, there's a quite, it's the coronavirus is quite contagious, death rates at, sorry, more, not to be crude about it, but mortality rates of anywhere between 0.4% and 4%. Um, and so that seems terrible, right? It seems, it is, it's frightening, actually. There's no doubt about it, that it's it's frightening and, and we're all scared. But when we look at the history of epidemics, uh, then, uh, it's not that we take comfort, you know, in, in other people dying and, you know, in, in the history of the of death from these epidemics. But honestly, I think it can can kind of tamp down some of the fear that, you know, human beings survived some of the worst epidemics, the worst epidemics in the history of the world. And yeah, there must and, be a uh, word so we, for it. You take you take um, solace in the notion that there are others who have the same problem. It's like yeah, Freud, I mean, but it's not quite. It's a little different than maybe it's Freud. like a historical empathy or something. You know, yeah, if we have yeah. more historical empathy, I think what we'll see is this is a this is a true crisis, but we've been through a lot worse than this. Yeah. So, uh, so the I think that you know the the most famous of the epidemics, at least among historians, of course, is the Black Death. Now, the Black Death is otherwise known as the plague. Uh, and it was caused by uh, a bacteria called pestis. And the plague was transmitted. I mean, it's very different from the coronavirus. C coronavirus is transmitted. You know, it's a, it's a virus, first of all, and it's transmitted in the air and, uh, you know, by, you know, germs sitting on tables and shaking hands, that kind of thing. The, uh, the, the Black Death of the Plague was caused by a flea which had this bacteria on it. And the flea was transmitted by uh, rats. The fleas would jump onto rats. And then uh, when the rats got close to humans and the fleas would jump off the rats and jump onto human beings. And that's how human beings were infected with the plague. So, uh, so and of course the origin of the, of the plague is in uh, the, the steppe region. We used to think it was China uh, but scholars have more information about this. They've actually been able to exhume cor uh, plague-infested corpses in France, do DNA testing on them, get a better handle on what this this uh, the bacteria actually looks like. And they've uh, concluded that actually the, the 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 plague started in somewhere in the steppe, the Eurasian steppe. This is the area today: Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Uh, the, the former Mongol Empire, which became uh, a series of khanates uh, run by, the, you know, Genghis Khan's sons. And, and, and so, so we think the plague originated there and then it traveled with trade 
and uh, and so the Silk Road actually became uh, the major uh, pathway for the plague to enter into uh, into uh, the Middle East and then into Europe. So mm -hmm. the plague came through the steppe region, ended up in Crimea, in the city of Kaffa. That's where the first major plague outbreak was. And and the believe it or not, the Mongols were actually laying siege to the city of Kaffa, and uh, the plague broke out in their camp. And they then, uh, this is kind of gross, sorry, but they actually put their own corpses onto catapults and catapulted them into the city, beyond the city walls, inside the city. And then the residents of the city got sick and they were able to conquer the city this way. Oh, that is gross. <laughs> so, yeah, that's disgusting, Man's right? Man's humanity okay. to man, for sure. Yeah, and, and actually we've seen this over history that, uh, that uh, uh, especially in warfare, uh, that uh, conquistadors and soldiers have actually used things like pla like uh, smallpox infested blankets and 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 uh, you know use them as kind of part of a military strategy to conquer these conquer indigenous populations so <clears throat> so it, it happens again and again in history it's now it's not widespread so there you see a picture and this is one example of it uh, actually, we, we don't know that the conquistadors, the, the Spanish conquistadors, including Cortez, actually used uh, blankets that were infested with smallpox deliberately. But this is a picture of, of Aztecs who have been infected with smallpox. And you can see uh, there in the picture, the uh, people are, uh, they've got these big uh, uh, blotches on their skin and, and blisters. And your whole body develops blisters. You get blistered in, inside your mouth. And it's a very painful uh, disease, and we think with smallpox that uh, death rates were in the uh, you know, somewhere between uh, 50 and 80 percent of, uh, sorry, 30 and 80 percent, maybe even 90 percent of people died of smallpox, depending oh. upon all kinds of conditions. So, so, how did it come to an end? Were affirmative steps taken uh, to stop it? Right. Uh, did we learn anything? Right. So, yeah. So, with with smallpox, we developed a vaccine. And today, actually, there's hardly any smallpox because people get vaccinated against the disease, but the disease still exists. And astonishingly, some people have decided not to get the vaccine. Uh, and so the smallpox is kind of having a little bit of a comeback because uh, people are worried about getting these vaccines. And, and, you know, this is how you prevent epidemics is with these vaccines. But, but back to the Black Death. So when we look at the smallpox, it's 30 to 80 percent death rate. It's similar actually for the Black Death. So the Black Death actually comes into Europe through the, the port of Kaffa. And it and then uh, rats, of course, uh, you know, there's lots of shipping going on uh, between Kaffa and other parts of the, uh, the end of the Silk Road, the European end of the Silk Road. And so these ships sail into European ports. They sail into Genoa. Uh, they, they sail into, so, so the plague gets into Italy, they sail into uh, the ports in, in Spain and Portugal, and so the Spanish get the plague, and then, and then uh, there are ships that go to England and France, and then it spreads. So it spreads really being... What are we talking uh, about, the 14th century? That's correct. We're 1349 is really when the plague decimates Europe. And so it spreads via shipping routes, and then it also spreads from from shipping from port cities into countryside areas because there's lots of trade going on between these large cities and small towns and villages in Europe. And interesting, so we're talking about maybe up to 60% of the population of Europe dies from the plague between 14, uh, 1349 and 13, about 1351, 52. Why not everybody? So, well, uh, so not everybody got uh, was exposed to the uh, the the uh, you know the rats and the fleas, right? Not everybody had the fleas jump onto them. That was really the the primary uh, transmission route. So you know, if you didn't have fleas, if you were you know cleaned yourself very well, then you were not likely to get the plague. That so ninety percent of the population of Europe is rural in this time period, and that means that most 
of the deaths took place not in cities but in the countryside so mm. this is kind of a surprise we usually mm. we assume it was about contact right and so in crowded cities then you'll have more you know contact and this is how the plague spread well it's it's not the way the plague spread so and and in fact uh, europeans in cities thought this might be how it spread and so shopkeepers closed up their shops and and uh, uh and you know this kind of thing kind of contact oriented and isolation oriented measures like we're doing today with some places are doing today with with the coronavirus but it didn't really didn't work with the the plague because people didn't understand the mode of transmission mm -hmm. now there were some people who who understood it better and uh they for instance uh, corpses were burned uh, the clothing that sick people wore was burned uh but you know those who treated patients of course uh, the fleas could jump onto you and then you're going to get the plague and you're probably going to die from this so um but the, the plague of course is uh it's it's the worst i mean it cause it sets europe back by maybe 300 years europe at that time in the 1300s is actually experiencing a population explosion uh there was uh the rise of kind of merchant cities and then small towns and and tradesmen and farmers who were actually beginning to sell their products to uh, uh commercial areas all of this stopped with the plague uh, there were maybe a thousand villages in England that were decimated and actually just basically depopulated completely. So, uh, so the plague is very interesting. Uh, one might ask the question, well, how do I know this? I mean, uh, you know, this is a long time ago. Actually, there were, we, we know this from censuses that were taken in that time period. And also in the countryside, uh, manorial registers were done, birth records, this kind of thing. So. The data is actually better than one would assume in terms of this the, the black death of the of the 1340s well you know i can imagine it's hard to put us back there you know real time but you know right now i came from a lunch where everybody in the restaurant was talking about coronavirus i mean really right, was, right. not even politics came close everything is coronavirus and i suppose back in the day in the in the plague day uh, they talked about the plague all day it was the one thing that dominated their lives. They had to figure out what was going on. They had to survive. They had to commiserate over those who didn't survive. Um, so I'm sure it occupied the same, you know, 99% of your conscious thought uh, then as it does now. So. Yeah, I think so. But the, the, maybe the big difference is, you know, the question of why, right? The question of the cause of it. Yeah. Since Europeans really didn't understand the cause of the plague, they didn't have any concept concept of bacteriology at that point in time. Yeah. I mean, you know, their, their cure for illness was well, let's let's bleed the person, right? So, yeah. right. <laughs> which caused a lot more misery than you know solve the problem. But it so, probably motivated at least some people to make inquiry. Maybe not immediately because the technology wasn't up to it, but as time went on, yeah. uh, people could remember well enough what happened with the plague so that they, you know, put some effort into trying to figure out more about medicine in general. Yes, of course, this happens eventually. I'm not sure it's the plague so much. I mean, honestly, the most people in Europe in this time period put the plague up to an act of God. God's mm -hmm. angry with us, mm -hmm. therefore he's punishing us. Why don't, mm -hmm. Eric, why don't we bring up the the picture of of the dance of death there it is so jay this was a common uh representation of the plague there were a number of these drawings that were done and of course the thing about the plague is that it affected everyone it killed aristocracy it killed kings and it killed commoners and this this uh, image is known as the dance of death and in the dance of death everyone was equal yeah. Oh, it's, uh, well, that's that's it's, uh, that still exists today with the coronavirus. <laughs> Everybody is subject to it. But what I find interesting well, is uh, is uh, right. our vice president, you know, suggests that the uh, the power of prayer. You know, we can deal with this through the power of prayer, and uh, oh, well, that that, is, that goes back to the dance of death, doesn't it? That's that's it's really fundamentally no different than explanations for the Black Death in the 1300s. That was you know put up to the uh, put up to the uh, the the God's punishment for misdeeds. So, yeah, I mean, some of this, you know, when people get afraid, uh, you know, I wouldn't depend upon their rationality at this point, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fear is its own thing and it, and it produces some pretty crazy outcomes. But 
What's I your think, next you know, epidemic? Let's talk about your next one, because certainly it right, doesn't right. stop at oh. the plague. <laughs> right. So, so you, so the the Black Death is really horrible for Europe, and it sets Europe back this tremendous amount. But the, really, smallpox. When we look at smallpox historically, smallpox is a disease that Europeans develop immunity to. And then when the Europeans begin to travel in the late 1400s, Columbus in 1492, and then lots of Europeans in the 1500s, then uh, the smallpox is one of those diseases which is transmitted to the new world. And as we saw in the picture, uh, and there it is again, the, the victims of the Aztec victim, victims of smallpox. And so, and, and new world peoples have very few diseases. They don't, they, we think they lacked even the common cold. So when their immune systems are exposed to the smallpox, they have no defense to this smallpox, measles, other kinds of diseases and a flu, uh, which Europeans would survive pretty easily, but honestly, the Native Americans died in droves. So uh, we're talking about over, uh, over about a century, we're talking about a depopulation of up to 90% in the New World. So we think the New World population was enormous. Uh, the indigenous peoples of, of North and South America might've been in the range of 80 to 100 million people and and within a century, there that population is down to less than ten million. So uh, this is you know when we think about the European conquest of the New World, we usually think about it in military terms or you know cultural terms, economic terms. Actually, disease is the biggest factor in this conquest. When the Aztecs begin their fight against Cortez, uh, about. Three months after they began the active military, you know, action against Cortez, the the small smallpox broke out in their in in Tenochtitlan, the big city that they were trying to defend. And sure enough, uh, you know, they were decimated by it. It was probably the biggest reason why Cortez was so easily able to overcome the Aztecs. I mean, he had two hundred warriors for heaven's sakes, and they had, you know, they had armies in the thousands. So it's disease. I mean, yeah. it's a simple explanation, but it's a really powerful explanation. Yeah. So I, smallpox, footnote to that is, uh, wasn't smallpox one of the diseases, perhaps the main disease that raged through the native Hawaiian uh, community and population yes. in the 19th century, brought brought from yes. Europe and the East Coast? Yeah. Exactly. So it's so it's not like these disease vectors end, you know, with uh, with Cortez or with or a century later, you know, with the depopulation of North and South America. They, Europeans can continue to spread these diseases and, uh, you know, it's, it's devastating, uh, you know, uh, and yes, in the, you know, in the Pacific, the 19th century is, uh, well, there, there's actually, we have some evidence that even at the time of Captain Cook, there are diseases, especially venereal diseases. Uh, and so they're spreading. And then uh, in, in the 19th century, you have these other European diseases that, uh, that decimate the Pacific population here in Hawaii we think there were up to maybe half a million, maybe 400,000 native Hawaiians who lived in the Hawaiian islands. And by the late 19th century, this number is minuscule by comparison. It's maybe, uh, uh, it's under, uh, I think it's under uh, 20,000 at this point. Oh, so, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, 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 it's, it's, this is a, it's kind of an it's 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 a stop it's a topic that has a lot of study among historians, but honestly, I think the general public doesn't think about it much. So I think what I get out of this, at least so far in your discussion, uh, is yeah. the word endemic occurs to me, which is which means uh, after you finish with the pandemic and now it's like inculcated into the species, uh, it goes right. on and yeah. on and on forever. And we, we right. as a species, learn to deal with it. And I, and I think that's where we are today, isn't it? We have learned yeah. from each one of these epidemics. Right. So, I mean, in the 19th century, then, Europeans uh, begin to figure out that these diseases are caused by pathogens, bacteria, viruses. You, you have the development of, of knowledge about these things. Uh, and uh, this makes a huge difference. Uh, the beginnings of this, actually, uh, you can kind of date this to the 1850s in London, which had a, a massive cholera outbreak. And, and a doctor there named John Snow 
rejected the prevailing assumption, which was cholera was caused by bad air. A miasma is what it was called. And, and this, was, this was the most widely ex, uh, accepted explanation for cholera. Snow said, no, that doesn't make sense to me. So he actually did a study of the households uh, where people died, linked them to uh, a, a, a water pump, a well that was right in the middle of this square. And then they dug up the well, found that there were some bricks missing from the well, and there had been intrusion from a house next door in which a sailor from India had come, had brought cholera and had died from cholera in that house. And of course, uh, uh, the, the, the house had its own septic system within the house and that had leaked into this well and caused this cholera outbreak. So Snow is actually instrumental in helping us to understand how, uh, he was an, an early, maybe the earliest epidemiologist, mm. helped, helped us to understand how this disease spread. And of course, this is crucial for our understanding of of all kinds of diseases today, including the coronavirus. How do these things spread? How can you, you know, identifying those who have become sick is baseline. And this is what John Snow did in the, the 1850s cholera outbreak in London. It sounded like a repeating pattern though, John. In other words, uh, here we are with coronavirus and uh, everybody says, you know, the common person says, wait a minute, this is the 21st century. We have science, we can deal with this. Right, uh, we right, have, we have right. way, we can we can splice the genes. We can you know do we can <laughs> we we can learn everything and and make chemistry that nobody could make before. Why are we having this? Right. We shouldn't be having this. But you know what? I think back in the old day for all these earlier epidemics, it was a similar process. We've had this before. Let's trot out what we did before and see if we can stop this one. But it was always different. Right. That's the problem. Right. It's always different, well, and science at the time cannot necessarily catch it. Well, look, we're a lot better prepared now than they than, uh, for instance, uh, Londoners were prepared in the 1850s. So, so you know, it's it's kind of hard to compare that. But but so our preparation is much better. But we're still humans. We still react in strange ways. I mean, you know, I'll admit myself when I when this first started, I thought, ah, let's not worry about. We're overreacting to this, right? And uh, actually, now I think oh, maybe we're not overreacting to this. And the public health community is right that we should have uh, we should we should have had more testing in the United States earlier. Uh, we should have had more rigorous identification of folks who are coming into the country and more, you know kind of uh, trying to stop it at the borders kind of thing. Well, that's the another problem, historical Jim. thing that seems to repeat itself. Um, but most of these epidemics, they, they have their way with us. They have their way and they, they kill a lot of people before they really get our attention. Only when they get our they attention, do. you know, and then they either, you know, burn themselves out by some sort of right. magical process, uh, which we don't fully understand. Uh, or we, uh, we finally, after being frightened for our lives, we finally developed the medicine. I mean, you could probably find this pat, this combination of phenomenon, uh, phenomena on, on every one of these things. Same kind of thing. Well, First, they, well, they burn themselves out. Then we figure it out later. <laughs> well, Jay, what, let's, let's do a, 20, a 20th century example. For instance, the Spanish flu okay. of 1918. Now, okay. this is the flu which is maybe similar to the coronavirus. But the thing about the Spanish flu is it happened during World War I, and you have lots of camps with soldiers in them, and you have soldiers at the front. So you have these uh, natural breeding grounds for the Spanish flu. So the Spanish flu was devastating. We think that up to 50 million people died from the Spanish flu, made somewhere between, uh, well, a, at a low maybe 5% at a high, maybe even 20% of, of those who uh, contracted the flu actually died. So, and the difference with the Spanish flu is that it affected young people and infants as well as, you know, middle-aged people. Uh, and it didn't affect older people as badly. But so, you know, part of it is as a community, uh, what do we know and how do we respond to what we know? Well, but at least, at least we're not, you know, at least we know enough now that we don't, we're trying to prevent people from congregating in, in uh, spaces where there's a lot of people in very tight places, which is what happened in the Spanish flu. But, uh, you know, as I said, people get afraid that, you know, uh, 
uh, the, you know, the president, of course, is worried about economic consequences. So he downplays it. I mean, but it's a it's it was unfortunate. Look, it's uh, when the president says, uh, oh, it's a hoax, uh, you know, made up by the Democrats. This is not good. This is uh, this is actually bad for uh, those who are actually, you know, public health officials and those who are actually trying to prevent and slow down this epidemic. So that actually is how epidemics happen is when people don't take it seriously enough. Well, that, there's, there's, a, there's a takeaway, and we're almost out of yeah. time, so we, we should deal with right. the takeaway here. Uh, given right. all the historical background we have, which is not complete, I think, uh, some of these things happened you know, way back before it was possible to write them down. Um, but right. given all the background we have, what, what is the best, um, the best state of mind, the best approach uh, from all that we've right. learned by, by the government, those who lead us, yeah. and by the individuals yeah. who are ultimately the victims? Right. So, you know, I think uh, what we can learn from the history is that, hey, we've been through this before and fear doesn't help. Uh, and uh, we've been through a lot worse than this and we survived it. So we're going to survive this. I think, uh, you know, let's let's work on our common sense. Uh, let's listen to the experts. We live in an age of science. So thinking that somehow this is an act of God, that's, you know, that's uh, nonsense thinking. OK, uh, so let's let's let the scientists do the, you know, the experts uh, do the talking and and follow their advice and and we'll get through this. So. To me, that's the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, we have to understand that we've been through this before and, and we've made a lot of those same mistakes before. And and we, we really need to pay attention to our uh, public health community. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and to rise above it, because you keep using the term we. Uh, and I think you mean in that context, we, the, the species, we, the community, we, the, yeah, we, the, the nations uh, of the world. Absolutely. And, and yeah. we may not yeah, include you and me because we could be victims. And so you have to think right. larger let's, let's than not, your own self. Yeah. Let's not use this for political gain. OK, yeah. this is going to affect Democrats and Republicans the same way. Let's yeah. let's not do that. Let's actually treat this for what it is. It's a very serious virus and and we want to protect people. And and uh, and, you know, I think uh, we can get through this thing if we work together. Here, here. How's that? Thank you, John David, <laughs> and always appreciate your your pers perspective and uh, and your lens right. of history. Thank you so much. You are welcome, Jay. Aloha. Now go wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs>